just from my side, thank you very much. You know, thank you very much for joining me. I think um, it's not often that I email email people and they just straight away say yes, let's let's do this thing and 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 have a bit of a chat around coaching and in, in particular your field today where I think you specialize is you know the coaching yeah. of fast bowlers. So yeah, thank you thank you very much for your willingness. You know, to just My pleasure, man. Hop on a call and have a chat. I want to know maybe to get us started. So you're an ex cricketer. Yeah. What is it that so a lot of ex cricketers go into coaching and 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 some don't? But what is it that yeah. for you appealed to this idea that coaching is sort of a pathway that you want to take? Well, it's actually um, a good question for me because uh, I'm a firm believer in that just because you're an ex-player doesn't mean you're going to be a good coach. So okay. let me let me just start off by that one. And that sounds quite ironic as the fact that I'm an ex-player and I'm a coach. Yeah. However, <laughs> um, however, I was... Uh, obviously, I played professional cricket and I played professional rugby, so I was the last one to do two of them. Um, but then I retired after two years of rugby. It just wouldn't work. So then I did 20 years of cricket. And that towards the end of my career and throughout my career, um, I, I was very much, uh, I want to be in control of my own destiny. So I did my own s and I did my own technical work. Uh, so I coached myself. Obviously, okay. you're not going to be that maverick who, who doesn't listen to anyone. But I was polite, but I know that I was, if I was going to be sacked and couldn't pay uh, the mortgage or put food on my table for my kids. I wanted to be, that's my responsibility. So I had sports science degree, Loughborough University, UKSC accredited SSC coach, um, uh, level three ECB, technical, technical, whatever, coach, uh, and now at Cambridge University to do a PGC, physical education. So yeah. uh, I got the full works knowing that if I did finish playing, um, I'd have something to fall back on. And that's why maybe I played for so long. The average age, average career for, for a fast bowler is about eight to nine, and I did 20 years of it. Yeah, sure. Maybe knowing that I, I was had something to fall back on. So towards the end, so I coached myself, uh, and then towards the end of my career, I, I became s &C coach to a lot of players around the world. Justin Langer to Scothic, I helped them do their S and C parts, uh, not necessarily bowlers. Uh, and then Derbyshire, my last two years, I was actually bowling coach. So okay. when people when people ask me why don't you do country cricket, well, I've done it. You know, yeah. I, I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. So I was player coach um, for Derbyshire. I was actually going to be a three prong coach, where I was going to be S and C uh, playing and a technical technical but the ecb yeah. wouldn't allow that to happen okay. so i was bowling coach and player then towards the end of my career i was offered so in 2010 i was offered to be uh, a coach so assistant coach for derbyshire county cricket club with playing as well but i wanted to come out of the game because uh, i genuinely believe and it's pretty controversial but it doesn't concern me really is that um coaches who stay in the game just say the same thing as their previous coaches would say and their previous coaches would have been taught that from their previous coaches yeah. who were coached in uh, that bubble of coach certification so I wanted to come out I'm not saying that's right or wrong but I wanted to come out and make my own choice up uh, make my own decisions if that's the right message yeah. so I took a job as head of cricket at a private school uh, and to build my own business up of pace slab uh, and cricket strength uh, and then coach bowlers. You know, at school, I have 10 year olds. And then obviously when I go to Rajasthan Royals, I got your other bowlers then. Yeah. So I, I do the full spectrum and I test everything, assess, don't guess. So I have the numbers. I have the video. I have the data. I've just been testing on myself again today. So I, can categorically say no without uh, prejudice, without fail, what it requires to bowl quickly yeah. from young to old. And that's okay. what I think separates me from, from everyone is I made a decision to come out of professional sport, uh, to learn more about coaching, learn more about the art of 
working with different abilities. Uh, and now, as it happens, I've gone back into the top now, but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't uh, uh, the normal passage of you're an ex-player, you must be able to coach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that is so true for many for many ex players as they just walk into coaching. But it sounds like you 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 did you, you will it firstly you're willing to do the hard graft with the younger ones yeah. to figure it out yeah. at the bottom level. I remember yeah. um, reading Bob Bulmer's book on coaching, and he said that in, in a, a quote in the book is that if you cannot coach a ten year old, there's no way you're going to coach a international player. So it's it's, it's it's pretty interesting that you sort of made that decision all by yourself to almost like go into that and experiment yeah, with, well, with what's happening down there. The best coaches need to be down there. The best coaches uh, need to be at different stages of a child's development, you know, between the ages of eight to 10 brain plasticity. It's a good age to uh, change technique. And, uh, and it's no uh, criticism of the ones who are currently coaching down there, but you'll find that they're not, they're not your level four coaches or your top level coaches because yeah. they're they're on the top. And yeah. top top level coaching is not coaching. That's managing. Yes. That, that's managing. Do you know what? What am I gonna teach one of those bowlers? You know, it's like uh, I've got an eye for technical stuff and physical stuff because I firmly believe uh, cricket is so far behind in everything, really, that it'll make a difference. But you need to have your best coaches down below that, maybe yeah. in your in your academies and that sort of stuff, and then you pass them up. But but most would skip that and go straight to the top, which is a fundamental flaw in the whole system. Yeah. Do you think it's the lure of money? Coaching uh, eight to ten year olds is not as lucrative as it is coaching, uh, you know, the the top players in the world or in the country yeah. at the county level. Or yeah, possibly, but it's also ego driven, isn't it? Yeah, they, they, you've you've been at the top as a player. Now you want to be at the top for uh, as a coach. You know, with all those uh, egg money, yes, and uh, the publicity, the adoration, uh, all that. But that's not my driver, really. My driver is to make a difference. My driver is to uh, yeah change people's people's lives in terms of their their careers, sport, and that's at all levels. You know, it's. So I'm here now sat in Wellington, where yeah. the Rajasthan Royals are obviously in the IPL uh, in Dubai. So I couldn't go out because, because of quarantine and, and the work that I've got here at school. Yeah. Um, but I still communicate on the phone. I look at the catapult data. I know what yardage, what miles they're doing, kilometers they're doing, how fast, all the numbers on the computer. And then I, then I um, pass it on and... I look at their their video, their uh, the TV games, and then I video it. And I've just done two now, where I've sent it to the head coach and go. Actually, be careful here. He's he's jumping a bit wide, or so yeah. it's. It, but I, that's I'm a geek of the game, man. I, I love I love yeah. the game, I, I, but I love uh, the sports science side of it. I love the data side and uh, changing technique. You know where. A lot of coaches are scared about changing technique mm. and and you end up uh, just not doing anything. You you yeah. sit on that, you walk that plank, you can go left and try and change technique and it fails. Then, you know, that might be the end of your career as a coach yeah. or you go right, you fall right and you make a massive difference. Um, I'm willing to take that risk, but a lot yeah. of people are not willing to take take that risk they just walk just keep the status quo and yeah. walk along the plant without creating change yeah so something that stands out for me really sort of with all your social media posts is this approach you bring to fast bowling which not a lot of people do which is a maybe a little bit more science driven yeah what is it that makes you feel like that is the way to go with fast bowlers versus this i maybe the idea where there's, there's some coaching philosophies out there that says, let the player figure it out for themselves, sort of what feels best for them. Uh, there's the ideas out there that fast bowlers are born. They're not made, um, you know, like, so, so. Yeah, I, I agree with all of them. Yeah. So you're, you're born to bowl 90 miles per hour. That's yeah. in your DNA. That's your genotype. Your fifth, 48% of your, uh, of you is your parents, you know, it, it, that's it. And you're born to bowl 90 clicks. You're born yeah. to be a Jofra Archer. Yeah. Uh, 
but my my so you're born with a pace uh, pace flow okay so it's that that that's you uh, my flow would be would be lower than Jofra's flow but the key then is getting the right training methods the right training for you whether that's technical tactical or physical understanding what the limiting factor is and then trying to push that pace ceiling up yeah. everyone can bowl quicker and and that's not everyone can bowl fast that's different but everyone yeah. can bowl quicker so if you bowl the same ball this year four miles per hour faster than you did last year then you're going to be better yeah if you bowl a four miles per hour ball that's wide long hop then it's not going to be better yeah but it's but it's that perception out there that uh playing experience will make you a good coach but that's nonsense yeah. um and to coach you need to make a difference and what i'm saying is there's no one size fits all yeah uh, i've come up with my hip and knee dominant classification um the, like muscle driven or tendon driven uh, dominance and the and bowlers fit in that then so it's then understanding how anthropometry how you're built uh, will fit into your action you know like the slingers your yeah. thompsons your malingas uh johnson tate um fidel edwards you know these were slingers uh, and they went that way because that's the way they their body was wanted to bowl and they actually matched they need to be strong. If you're yeah. a slinger, you need to be strong because then it's about accessing the, the stretch shortening cycle, which is 0.125 seconds. So because they've got more time, they can use strength. But my issue comes when all bowlers do the same thing. We chase the strength, uh, the game. That let's get stronger. Let's do two times your body weight squat. But actually, you know, ground contact time for fast bowling doesn't access strength it happens too quickly for it to be about strength so actually they would be better served doing more specific special strength stuff like weighted ball or the exigen suit yeah. and actually groove technique because for a hip dominant bowler mitchell stack dale stain um nagakoti uh Kate Tiagi, these these guys so, thin. sorry for interrupting if you say hip dominant what do you mean by that do they generate pace more from their hip is yeah they, they generate is... pace from momentum okay um, so it's all about movement uh, and it's all about how they land on back foot contact i don't want to give too much away from yeah. it because lots of people are now stealing it but yeah that's that's fine yeah but it is it is about it's about more momentum and it's about shorter ground contact time. When okay. they got short ground contact time, they're really they're really wiry. They're really tendony. Um, you just look at Dale Stain, really. Yeah, um, McGraw and would be similar. Pollock. Yeah, I'm McGraw assuming. would be. Yeah, would be similar. Uh, but they, but they then don't brace their front leg. Yeah, they don't brace their front leg because the front leg hasn't got time to extend forward because they're so fast on back foot contact, but also being tendon driven, hip dominant allows you to cheat technique. So you don't have to have an awesome technique if you're clearly that's a good technique, but you yeah. don't have to have the attractors like I call it because time is your friend, but yeah. time can be your enemy if you're knee dominant and very weak. So it's that yeah. understanding uh, what is required for each individual. Everyone yeah. has a limiting factor. It's about testing them. It's yeah. profiling them and identifying what they need as opposed to everyone coming in the gym. You're all squatting. You're all pull-ups. You're all power cleans. Don't get me started on Olympic lifting for fast bowlers. Uh, <laughs> I saw a post was, this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It's just... It's mind blowing. I yeah. just don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, and everyone has a different program. You like if you come with my sessions, you might get two bowlers doing the same, but everyone else is doing different sessions. Yeah. And that's why I follow the Bondichuk classification. It's it's all a big system. I'm I'm a systems coach, you know. Yeah. It's, and that's why a lot of my stuff resonate well in India, is because they will do Indian bowlers will 
are desperate to bowl fast. And if you tell them what to do and give them a starting point and give them an end point, they will do it. Yeah. And that's what, and, and, but if they can see through uh, the BS as well, but if yeah. you deal in fact numbers, then, you know, they, they, great. India, India bowlers are awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I want to ask you one or two technical questions, if okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned the, the braced front leg. Is it important to bowl yeah. with a braced front leg? Like, is that the be all yeah. and end all? Because you have bowlers who, who bowl with a braced front leg and they bowl pretty quick. And then you have ones that don't, and they also bowl pretty quick at times. So, yeah, yeah no, exactly. And that, and that is identifying what they are, you know, yeah. uh, are they hip or knee dominant? You know, yeah. a knee dominant bowler will need to brace their front leg because it's about time. They have more time uh, and fast bowling is about uh, putting more force into the floor. It's about impulse on front foot contact. Yeah. And that relies on. So back foot is about stiffness off it quickly. Front foot is about extensibility. It's about time, force and range of movement. Yeah. Um, but then you have bowlers. And like to me, number one, if I was to start a bowler from scratch, it'd be Jofra Archer. Yeah. That that is it is okay. perfect. He hits all the attractors that I call them key points in the action that need to be repeated and fixed. Yeah. Around that, then you have the fluctuators, the the gather, the bits in between that can be the idiosyncratic stuff for bowlers. But I, I believe and data and science and numbers and, and everything shows that you need to brace your front leg because then it's about physics. Then you have, uh, you know, it's a fulcrum around the pelvis. You haven't got another joint moving around your knee. So more joints that move, more energy lose. It's about maintaining the center of mass, the height of it, gravitational momentum going into front foot contact. If you collapse, your center of mass has gone lower. There's loads to yeah. it. And and that's the thing about because me talking now. Yeah. Fast bowlers, fast bowling coaches around the world will go, what? Yeah, you're exactly. About, <laughs> exactly. You're, you're, try, you're, you're, you're trying to make it complicated. But actually, it's not complicated. You know, you need to we need to get more knowledge about this. And me yeah. talking to um baseball. Well, pitching coaches are pretty similar, but in terms of the top end athletics coaches, how I'm talking is it's just every day for them. But yeah. for cricket, we think that playing experience is enough for you to become a coach. Yeah. No, we will yeah. never truly see how fast someone can blow, bowl until we improve our knowledge as coaches. Yeah. So key, key things for fast bowlers, they need to get as much momentum into front foot contact. Okay. So is that related off, to pace of run up, all that sort you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah so how they about, jump, all of that stuff that builds yeah. the momentum, yeah. Yeah, it's about seven to eight meters per second, um, running in, attacking the crease. The, the, the knee dominant bowlers will be a bit slower because they don't rely on momentum. They rely on torque as well, rotation. Yeah. Hip dominant guys don't get rotation as much rotation. Yeah. Then it's about the position of the takeoff, which is the impulse stride, the how long you, uh, how long that jump is, how much time you spend on back foot contact, hip shoulder separation, uh, brace front leg. It's there's a lot to it, which is in my post and yeah. Which is why I'm going to do a pace lab uh, certification. Yeah. But there's a lot to it that the fastest bowlers in the world do. Yeah. And uh, and there's I think I can't remember. I think it's been six to eight uh, attractors. And if you if you hit four or five of them, uh, then you you give yourself a good chance. They'll yeah. say, well, Sean Tate bowled 100 miles per hour. Um, uh, my favorite show actor bowled 100 miles per hour, but they actually collapsed on front leg. Yeah. But what they did was uh, they're clearly very strong, but they yeah. were slingers. They yes. were slingers uh, and they had time. So impulse, time, and force. They were on that ball longer than most and they had rotation. So if you're, 
so a pelvis, uh, it, fast bowling is all about the pelvis, but it has you need tension around the pelvis, but it has limited range. So, so you can have you need tension on either side. So if you're a side arm bowler, yeah, you're an right arm bowler. I have lots of tension from rotation, hip rotation on my right side. If I have too much there, I can't have a lot on my left side. So that's why the the bowl the really overly side on bowlers can't have a massive delivery stride and swing leg retraction because they've taken all the tension on the this side. Yeah, but okay. that's why the the best bowlers are. Uh, biomechanically perfect uh, bowlers, your Brett Lee, your Joffre Archers, are the ones that have a mid-wing. Okay, so yeah. they have a bit of tension on the rear side and yeah. they have a bit of tension on the on the Lift front side. side. Yeah. Yeah. So so that that in that understanding is really important for bowling coaches yeah. as well. But yeah. Like so this the thing. So if you're a front if you're front on, let's call Front on with the old old model on back foot. Yeah. Front front leg needs to be slightly over to create tension. Otherwise, you have no force closure around the pelvis. Yeah. There's no okay. tension tension in any muscles. So yeah. if you have bowlers bowling down the uh, the channel, bang yeah. bang bang, like how they would be off. Yeah. You'll off, often find they collapse. Yeah, the they collapse leg. into that front side. Yeah, yeah because yeah. they have no, they have no extended floors closure. They have no tension around the pelvis, and that okay. again is really important. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so like, like I said before, I think what you bring is like this really unique approach, you know, and it all makes sense to me. To me, what yeah. do you think needs to happen for coaches to be more aware of this sort of information, you know, and these these ideas is it that our coach education is sort of not up to speed is it that 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 um, coaches aren't hungry enough because most of this you did by yourself through yourself yeah. with like you said your own drive you know just to yeah. just wanting to make players better yeah uh, so i've gone outside that's why answer to question coach education is not is not good enough yeah um but then i do get it you know me talking now like this might go over a lot of when well, 99% of coaches heads yeah. who just want to know the basics of fast bowling. Okay. Yeah. I can do that as well. But, so coach education can do that, yeah. but then there's aspects of it, dynamic systems theory, and that are really quite complex yeah. for us as coaches, but then it's the art of coaching to make it easy for other coaches yeah. and players is to simplify it and provide the right cues. And my stuff work because uh, I tap into the subconscious. A bowler just does the drill. Bowlers mm. fix positions, don't have to think about it. The only one cue is either throwing a medicine ball or creating tension on that front leg. I fixed the base. I fixed the base. If, you, if you're a coach that provides more than one conscious cue when they're bowling, like the walkthrough drills, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, and if we're honest, uh, and I've done it, if we're honest as coaches, we know that, that those drills don't work. But however, it's it looks as if we do coach. Yeah. Like if I'm saying, okay, to a bowler, okay, uh, try and jump, uh, bring the gather up there, lead with your front arm, don't fall away, brace your front leg, get off all at once, then it's that's car crash, isn't it? And then yeah. the worst case scenario is they get the yips. Yeah. But that's why the understanding of uh, how we acquire skill, motor learning is the number one priority for coach education. How does how do we change technique? You know, I have seven ways to change technique. And then you design drills, and I've designed drills based on technique and S and C, so you join them up together. So special strength, like Bondachuk and Verkochansky would say. Yeah. Um, and then that's how they work. But coach education needs to be better. Coaches need to pack their egos, if I'm yeah. honest. Like, that we need to be more open. I'm not saying my stuff is right, um, but it's it's pretty good. It, it's working, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and But I've got other stuff from 
different bowlers, you know, different bowling coaches. And we all, like adults, need to sit down. How good would it be if there was a world worldwide fast bowling organisation that, that sits down once or twice a year and goes, right, this is the best way. This is the best way for each individual to bowl. OK, now you have that knowledge. Now use your skills as a coach to try and impart that on the bowlers. But we know that will help them push the pace ceiling up. That's the safest way. It's repeatable. And it's about efficiency and effectiveness. And then, yeah, well, you know, people, the game will attract more youngsters then because people want to see pace. Yeah. You know, when Joffre comes on to bowl now, when that um, South African guy, what's his name, Nofki? No, what's his name? Uh, Nokia. Nokia, when he yeah. bowls, you know, the world's gone mad. Yeah. The world has gone mad and, and he bowls quickly, man. But you yeah. look at his bowling action, mm. he's got a brace front leg. Yeah. <laughs> brace front leg and he uh, attacks the crease. Uh, hopefully, hopefully people will train him correctly now because um, he, he doesn't need a lot of strength work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's more isometric work, but now nah, he looks exciting potential, man. Yeah. What's your what's your what's your thoughts on a back foot drag or lift? Um, so. Well, that so in in javelin, it's a thing, drag it, drag in the back foot. But yeah. javelin, uh, it's longer ground contact time, so it's higher impulse. Uh, the implement is heavier. Um, so it's it's slightly different. Yeah. However, um, if you do it as a bowler, then great. But what it does, it identifies you've separated your hips and shoulders. So okay. your feet, your so both feet have to be facing forward when you're delivering a ball. Yeah. So then your pelvis is open. Too many bowlers have been taught to jump, but then uh, when they jump the upper body and lower body turn sideways in the air. So yeah. I, asked, I asked bowlers the question, so when you run, do you run sideways? No, you don't. No. So yeah. why, why do we ask bowlers to jump and land with a closed pelvis? So if you've closed pelvis, I'm facing that way with my pelvis and I'm going that way. Yeah. So my leg can't drive forward. So I've crossed over. I'm bowling to fine leg. Yeah. And then my back leg has to open the gate and come yeah. round because it's blocked in the front. Yeah. So it can't drag. So what it does, if a bowler doesn't drag, first thing I'll go, actually, what's the alignment like? Yeah. Are they too heavy on back foot contact? Has their heel touched? Yeah. You know, if their heel touches, that's the human handbrake. It shows me that we've lost the stretch yeah. on the cycle in the lower limb. And now we need to restart. All the energy is gone. Yeah, I've believed um, that for a while. Definitely. Without yeah, being taught it, I just noticed it. That no, the best don't let their heel hit the yeah, ground. Yeah, heel can't touch. Yeah. Heel yeah. can't touch. You yeah. know, Jofra is still, people say, well, Jofra touches. No, he doesn't. He's like that far off. Yeah. And he's, oh, he's already dorsi flexed by the time he comes into back foot contact. So yeah. he's just bang off through it. Yeah, and I know that because I've tested him, I videoed him, I spent yeah. time. With him. I didn't, I didn't coach him technical wise, you know. Yeah. That, you can't do that in the IPL, but I watched him bowl and I tested him before, and I know his numbers, man. So yeah. I know the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but back foot, but so dragging, and if they don't drag, then I look at that, and then if they don't drag but still got a good alignment, then I would go well. It's. I wouldn't teach someone to drag because it's supposedly the thing to do. It. Yeah. What it does. What it does is highlights. Highlights. Some bowlers don't separate their hips and shoulders, which is the biggest issue. Yeah. Number one issue in 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 the world is bowlers have been taught to jump. Fast bowling is a sprint. Fast bowling is triple jump. Fast bowling is about controlling the collision and managing the forces and uh, managing them to go forward towards the batter. Yeah. That's what fast bowling is, man. Okay. You want to bowl, you want to bowl faster, you get more momentum. It's, it's really is that simple, yeah. man. If you talk, if you say hip and shoulder separation, do you mean like, so if your shoulders is pointing in one way, you get your hips to point yeah. in a different way? Yeah. 
So your hips. And, yeah. that, and that's the thing as well, is like coach education would say that that's it's a mixed, mixed action. action. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it's so yes, there are some I wouldn't know how to say a mixed action really, but so it's it's about proximal uh, proximal distal sequencing. So hips facing forward, yeah, slightly side on. Yeah. Now the now the fascial slings, the fascia, the oblique sling. Yeah. Are pretense, the elastic band, so the the serape, the X yeah. factor here yeah. is yeah. all tense, and it takes hardly any effort to bowl because your fascia does that for you. Yeah, and that's why that's why your know, Alan Donald, what a beautiful action that was. Yeah. Yeah. it was that, and people say, yeah, but he jumped. Well, he didn't jump high though. No, he he jumped forward. Yeah, and was midway braced for beautiful action. Probably, yeah. I would say, number one of all time, I think. Sure. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, he did have a, he did have a pretty good action. So, yeah, my, my take, and I don't know if you agree with this, but my take on mixed actions was when I learned this thing about back foot impact with a heel being raised, I thought that mixed action only is, happens really when that back foot lands and there's a, a misalignment, when the heel strikes, because then it's like the forces through your body goes into the ground or the ground forces shoots up through your body and that's when you get the pain yeah. to happen. But if you land on the ball of your back foot, then that doesn't happen. That doesn't so then, happen. Then you can have that separation. That's how I've, I've always thought about it. Yeah, the, se the, so the problems start when they jump sideways. So the whole problem is... but. Bowlers don't under, don't know how to uh, disassociate their upper body and the lower body, so that's why my kneeling constraints drill it works because your your pelvis is open while I'm creating more tension around you. So that's yeah. that's separation. And like all bowling drills, I do it has has to be a weighted ball. Yeah. Never do a drill for bowling with a cricket ball. It has to be slightly different because the brain is going, this is a cricket ball. I'll yeah. just do what I've always done. But uh, if you have a slightly different weight ball, then straight away the brain's going, oh, this is a bit different, actually. Yeah. Um, and then it's easier to learn. That's um, Again, it's it's motor learning. Um, but it, for me, mixed action is is not a, th is, is not a thing. I, I, I genuinely don't believe it, but... Mm -hmm. That's so my what, opinion. So what causes injury in fast bowler? Because that's what we sort of taught, that these mixed actions is what causes the injury. So if it's it, not... Injuries, it's the, sp the spine can go uh, flex, extend, and it can rotate yeah. uh, around that region. It can't do all of them together. Okay. Uh, okay. And, that, and one of the attractors is respect, respect the sagittal plane. So we go forward. Yeah. We flex forward. So we land, we rotate... And then we go into the next attractor. We said sagittal plane. We flex forward. Ah, okay. Problems, problems happen when you blend them all together. So it's uh, you jump sideways. You land heavy. Yeah. Now your pelvis is closed. Yeah. Your front leg, front leg crosses over. Yeah. So now poor alignment. But I'm I'm facing that way. But I got to bowl that way. Yeah. So then that's lateral flexion. That yeah. is the issue. And, and lots of it can be sorted by improving the stiffness on back foot contact, which goes back into PE programs yeah. at school, physical literacy, yeah. or bowlers bowl midway. So you get yeah. a bit of talk, but you get momentum. Yeah. Um, but that is the big thing. And overly squatting, knee dominant exercise, cycling, um, so with that knee flexion, then it's about time. You want to access the muscles. So everything is about grunt. It's about time, which you don't have in fast bowling. Yeah. But if that's what you're used to, you know, then you're going to search for that in your bowling action. And the, bo the body is a protective organism and it suits and it's one protection and efficiency. So it'll find the best way, the fastest way to go forward. And yeah. sometimes that puts your body in some stupid positions and that's where lumbar stress reactions happen. Yeah. It's not about uh, it's mixed, uh, mixed action. It's about the fact that you're asking your spine to rotate and uh, flex extend and it just yeah. can't do that. Yeah. Okay. 
So then that is in essence then a mixed action when you're asking it to your spine yeah. to mix those two elements of the different types of flexion that it can do. Yeah, but it's not a mixed action as but you it, and I know. It's, yes, it's, it's, as it's been taught to yeah. us, it's sort of a different, yeah. it's still mixing things, but not mixing the things that yeah. we've been taught. But, yeah. yeah, but you're not mixing the action, you're mixing yeah. anthropometry, you're mixing, yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. Planes, okay. you're mixing planes of movement, probably. Yeah. 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 Okay. I want to I want to shift gears here a little bit. So you you spoke um, a little bit about sort of the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. And so uh, a huge passion of mine is the mental side of the game and how yeah. that relates. So a lot of what you do seems to be towards the technical side and the physical side. But as a coach, I'm sure at times you step into the space where it's more about the thinking and the feeling and the strategizing of the game, et cetera, et cetera. How do you go about as a coach incorporating those elements for fast bowlers? Um, well, the, so let's take, uh, so I'm big on implicit learning. Um, so I, I want to, so, and I talk about going through the stages of learning with all the bowlers and, and the time they spent. It's, from that, uh, what is it? Unconscious. Uh, Unconscious inco incompetent. Yeah. yeah Conscious that, so incompetence, that stuff, yeah. 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 So problems start between stage three and stage four when you have to think about stuff. You yeah. know what you need to do, but now you have to think about stuff. And that's where first two stages are pretty easy to do. Stage yeah. three and four is where it's hard, when you want it to be subconscious. But so implicit learning. So let's take it back to Yorkers. So if you're talking about tactics uh, and all that and visualization, uh, and I get all that, I don't do a lot of it, yeah. but I'm sure it, it has it has its um, its role in fast bowling uh, on in any any sport really. But yeah. it, it, let's take the Yorkers for example, and I believe the Yorker is a bowl a ball that's underused. And it's, it's underused because you get commentators on TV saying, well, if you bowl Yorker, um, it can be a half volley or a full toss. Well, like, so it's not a Yorker, is it? Yeah. That's, if, if, my, um, if my uncle had a beard, she, he would be my auntie. Yeah. So it's <laughs> like, so it's not a Yorker then. So it's up to us to create drills that allow them to hit their Yorkers consistently and that's where stuff like the v-flex come in where we create a, a zone it creates an area which you know those three three yeah. big circles yeah I've yeah, got. yeah, yeah. So once again bowler that's all i want you to do is get it through that first big ring which yeah. is like five meters away from you and then the drill will take it into the hole into yorkers yeah so just bowl just do that Keep yeah. bowling. Keep repeating it. Let's add variability to it. Let's make you a bit more tired. Problems start with with um, just putting cones down. It it doesn't work because yeah. you don't have cones in a game. So, and the perception action coupling, it, it's just it's it's not doesn't transfer. It's not relevant. But the main yeah. thing, there's no consequence to bowling badly in a net for a bowler. If you bowl, if you bowl a bad ball in a net, okay, they, they can whatever laugh at you. I'm not sure they wouldn't do that, but the coach can shout at you a bit. But it's actually, it's not life or death, is it? It's yeah. it's no consequence to it. But where a batter has to react to a ball, so they're always having to be on their guard and, and react to a different stimulus, whether that's a long up. Or, ooh, have you gone? No, I'm no, yeah. still there. Yeah. <laughs> Whether that's a, a long up or I'm running the back ways here, but I'll get I'll sort that out. Long up or a good Yorker. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it has to react. But a bowler, there's no consequence to it. So I'm doing some, I'm uh, going to have a webinar now with a guy from Switzerland about how fatigue, mental fatigue uh, affects skill. So I want to fatigue a bowler to make it as specific as they can and then go through the V-flex and I, and, I, and I guarantee bowlers will be able to nail their Yorkers. But at the minute, mm. um, it's, again, we go back to coach education. It's not, not that understanding of implicit learning. 
in that way. Yeah. Um, but in terms of if the question was about visualization and goal setting, uh, learning types, and they all ha they have a place. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. Okay, so if a bowler that you work with is a bit low on confidence, how would yeah. you how would you approach that? Bowled a couple um, of games, went for a bit of runs. You know, ego's taking a bit of a knock. Well, it's funny you should say that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple now in the IPL, but yeah. what what I do is I strip it back to basics, and I've had the conversation with with a couple three of them this morning. Is take it back to when they were top draw, when they were top of the game, what did it feel like? Uh, not in terms of the action, but how the, how it felt in terms of their confidence and why. What was their uh, triggers? Why were they bowling that, that successfully? What yeah. were they doing? And are they doing something slightly different now? Yeah. But I just take it back to you. You know, you can bowl a ball as long as the ball is what you're trying to do and the batter hits it for six. You know what? He's a, he, his, his job is on the line as well. He's got yeah. to, that's his skill. Yeah. So if he's, beat, if he's beaten you on that battle, awesome. Well done. Let's yeah. go back to the next event, the next battle. Be, be sort of happy in yourself. What are you trying to do? Okay, yeah. I want to go up. And I want to execute my Yorker, knowing yeah. that I've trained it, I've practiced it in the right environment, right context. And again, if he reverse sweeps me, if he ramps me for four six, so be it. Yeah. But when but when the bowlers then are not sure what to do, they haven't got a plan, uh, they can't execute their skills, uh, they're internalizing everything, then it's about actually remembering what you did when you were on top form. Mm. Okay. Is there, a, is there a sequence that you would... So if, if, if Jody arrived at your nets today and I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fast bowler, or I'm, I'm looking to bowl faster, whatever it might be, yeah. is there a sort of sequence of, of steps that you would analyze me through? Like, have you got like, okay, I start looking at this, then this, then this, then this to sort of know what I'm working with? And if so, yeah. what would that be? Yeah, spot on. Good question. Um, I have, uh, and that's again what separates me, I think, from everyone else. Uh, not everyone, that's not right. But is that I, I test everything. Okay. So I, I have a 10-point profile. So yeah. that goes from uh, ball velocity. Ball velocity with a heavy ball, ball velocity with a light ball. Arm speed using motors, you know, uh, uh, using these fellas here. Yeah. Using motors. So they go on a sleeve. Yeah. Um, so then I can correlate arm speed with ball velocity. Yeah. Is the lighter ball slower than the heavy ball? Well, it shouldn't be. Why does that happen? Yeah. Um, then you've got your normal. I do lots of isometrics. Okay. So I do lots of. So I measure the dynamic strength index. Are they using the strength they have? Yeah. Or actually, is that it? Do they need to get stronger? Yeah. Um, power. Um, what else? And then obviously then the kinematic sequence, the shapes, the, uh, the kinogram as artist calls it, but the kino sequence. Um, and then they go from the impulse, right? Yeah. And I, I have also got a 1080 sprint. So I measure their uh, approach velocity. I measure yeah. the force, the power, meters per second into back into impulse, back foot, and front foot contact. And I can see those numbers. You know, some yeah. bowlers might some bowlers might leg it in at eight meters per second. Yeah. But by the time their front foot contact hits, they're bowling at five meters per second. Yeah. And that that there's a reason why that's happened. Yeah. Is it because they've hit their impulse strike too hard because their coach has told them you got to jump off the ground? Yeah. So if you jump off the ground, you fly. Yeah. So some bowlers fly for two meters. So you yeah. can't do anything. 
So what goes up must come down and a bit harder. Yeah, so, and then it tends to slow down. <laughs> exactly. They slow yeah. down because they've got a heavy back foot contact because their heel touches. If their heel touches, I can guarantee you they're not going to separate their hips and shoulders. If they're not going to separate their hips and shoulders. The front foot contact is going to be collapsed because it's going that way, not straight yeah. swing leg retraction. Their arm, their arm slot would be probably a bit lower. They're not going to be able to keep get their wrist behind the ball because I'm going that way. I want to bowl mm. that way. My wrist will do that. Yeah. But Steph, I, I'm bowling in swingers. I want to bowl out swingers. Well, have you looked at your base? <laughs> you know? yeah. have, have, you, have you looked at your alignment? Well, why is it like that? Or oh, have you looked at your uh, back foot contact? Impulse strike. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to run in too slowly? What are your strides like when you're running? Are they too small? You know, are you just going up and down without going yeah. forward? Um, so loads of that. And then I'll video them from the back and I'll video them from the side. Um, and then I paint the profile. I paint the picture. Then I see how it all matches up. And then intervention plan. Yeah. What is your limiting factor? Yeah. Is your limiting factor technique? Are you a beast? You know, mm -hmm. the numbers in the gym, are they extraordinary? So why are they awesome and you're bowling backwards? Mm -hmm. Well, it's got to be either specific strength. You actually, you're not that transfer of training is, is poor or technically is there blockage in the action? So there's, there's a massive, massive uh, plan to it all, an assessment. And um, a big thing for me is assess, don't guess. You know, you need to know where they are. Yeah. Then you need to plot the journey. We're gardeners. Yeah. You need to pave the path for them. Uh, and then I can tell you in four weeks with ball velocity, that's the ultimate. Yeah. For me, that's the ultimate. Uh, identifying where the, the program works is ball velocity. Yeah. That's why I constantly uh, speed gun. So yeah. many speed, so many coaches around the world haven't got speed guns, you know. You know, let let alone this fella. Yeah. You know, you can have uh, you can have those pocket radar things, which is yeah. actually quite accurate. They're only about three or four miles per hour away from this. Yeah. And this is like your 1500 quid police stuff, the baseball yeah. million pound contract. Yeah. That's really accurate. And a really good one for me to mention is <laughs> I've tested the bowlers who are yeah. bowling on TV now on this gun. Yeah. And those speeds are like five miles per hour faster. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, that, that is another thing for you to yeah. remember as well. But yeah. I always test so I know. If my program's working, if it's not working, if that ball velocity is not going up, then, well, something must be wrong here somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. But most most coaches would wait until pre-season before they change the program. And then, then it's too late. Yeah. It needs to be a weekly. That's why, you know, I do auto-regulatory training. So, yeah. AREG, is, it's the future. I'm just about to go here now and do a little webinar for myself on, on yeah. there uh, about how it works, you know, for mm. every why I speed gun, every percentage drop off on ball velocity requires a day and a half rest. Yeah. So and that's why if you flog someone in, in the in the net on a Monday and expect them to do the same on a Tuesday, yeah. you're mistaken, man. Yeah. So what? So so is that got to do, or would that research sort of support things around bowling loads and how and and recovery times and things like that? Yeah, d yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um. So I obviously I've been fortunate, and I am fortunate to get all the gadgets in, in the world, and we've got catapult with the Rajasthan Royals. So, and I was obviously looked at that data last year. Um, because I was there last year for training and playing. And there's a high correlation. Uh, they've got an algorithm called Player Lot on Catapult. Yeah. Um, there's other GPS units out there, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there, so there's, and when, once that is high, there's a good correlation between that and ball velocity. And there's a high correlation between the player load and injury spikes. Okay. But you don't want workload spikes. That's yeah. when issues. Workload okay. spikes. Yeah, bowlers can bowl every day. Yeah, but they can't bowl flat out every day. You every can bowl day. flat out. 
you can bowl flat out twice a week. Yeah. But you can bowl every day. Like on my tempo bowling of yeah. 70% effort and, and grooving technique. So you can yeah. bowl every day. And you can bowl first day of your winter program. Yeah. Like okay. I, I, it, it can, makes me uh, confused when a bowler wouldn't bowl until about a month before season. Well, like, well really? Yeah. So if you're, so it's like telling a sprinter, preparing for an Olympics for five months of the year, you're going to be on the bike. Yeah. And then like one month before we're going to do some sprinting. <laughs> that wouldn't happen. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in cricket, it seems all right. We don't want to do too much bowling yeah. because it's stressful. Yeah. It's only stressful if you've got the wrong technique. Yeah. And your <laughs> and body's wrong... maybe not, not, it hasn't built up the resistance to the stresses it's going to go through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The only, there's only one true transfer of training and that's bowling. Yeah. But, and, yeah. and that, it, that is it, you know, that's the only thing. And then from there you can go with a heavy ball, light ball, the exogen suit, some weighted vest, and yeah. then some resistance, some assistance bowling. But ultimately, you have to bowl all winter. Yeah. Uh, but the air reg, the autoregulatory training, is about this nervous system. It's about neurodynamics. Um, and it's about not going back to that speed well too often. Because yeah. that it, it, your nervous system will be fried, man. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Steph. It's been freaking brilliant chatting with you. Our pleasure, man. I've enjoyed it. Please, please tell people out there that's listening to this where they can find you. What's the best way to get in touch with you if they want to ask questions, if they can. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, as, you, as you've probably seen on my Instagram, that Stefan Jones 105, yeah. I give a lot of information out for free, probably yeah. more, than, more than most. But now I've got a website. It's not out yet, but we'll have, because ultimately I want this to be my full-time thing so yeah. i need to make money out of it as well yeah. Yeah. so we're going to have a separate piece that community uh, which is more of a paid sort of instagram feed but then i give loads of my uh, normal instagram uh my website will be out soon i'm on twitter as well stefan jones 105 but i'm happy to ask any questions i've also got cricketstrength.com but yeah um yeah i'm op- i just want bowlers to bowl faster and get the right yeah. information and and that's not to say bowl fast 90 miles per hour you're born yeah. to do that let's everyone get that into your head no you're born to do that yeah but you can bowl faster you can yeah. bowl three four five miles per hour faster with the right technical tactical and physical knowledge yeah awesome 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 pleasure Th- man yeah thank you very much for your time i appreciate it pleasure